Hello everybody, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the series. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. Before we get started on today's episode, I just want to update you guys on where I've been. It's been a little while since I've uploaded a video and I just wanted to cover that. So whether you believe it or not, I've actually been jumping on TikTok and actually creating content there. Specifically, again, Android Kotlin based content. Uh, but you know, if you know TikTok, the videos can't be that long, so they are basically serving as micro tutorials in the Kotlin programming language and then recently within the scope of you know Android. So I've added a link in the description to the TikTok profile. Uh, if you have an account, I'd appreciate a follow and we can kind of keep communication going there as well. And I will be posting pretty regularly on both there and YouTube to just continue to grow my personal brand and provide content that I find useful for for others. So yeah, that, that's where I've been. That's what I've been up to lately. Uh, it's been actually a lot of fun. So if you are interested, I'd definitely appreciate you checking it out. And if you came from there and found yourself here on this channel, uh, welcome. And we're just trying to tie up all the loose ends here and make one big community. So with that being said, let's jump into the actual episode today. So in the last episode, we went ahead and implemented the rest of our sort functionality here on the main screen. Off screen, I kind of updated it so you kind of can tell which item in this bottom sheet is selected so you know which sort order the data is currently being sorted by. In today's episode we're going to go ahead and work on the customization a little bit. Right now this, actually I think this was called profile and I updated it behind the scenes to say customization, but anyway this screen is pretty barren right now. You can really just add categories and then if you long click on a category you can go ahead and delete that category. So if we click yes where you know we have flow connected to the room database and everything is just reactive and whatnot so that's pretty nice one thing I wanted to add here is the ability for the user to customize these different colors here that we see um, obviously the red orange and green kind of makes sense but for a better UX it might be valuable to allow the user to customize that and then maybe there's even some accessibility reasons that that stands out you know if people have difficulty seeing these kinds of colors maybe their maybe other colors work better for them and their vision so therefore they can kind of tune it how they want uh, we're still basically going to work on the notion of this idea of high medium and low priority and that's the only colors that we're really changing so let's dive into it one tidbit updated the font size here of the editor just because well mainly for TikTok, but uh, hopefully it makes it a little bit easier on your end to kind of see exactly what's going on here not a small screen or anything like that or small text. So let me know in the comments if that helps. So off camera, I've done the bare minimum here to get a fragment with a uh, view binding layout kind of set up here. And also the navgraph implementation where we've added it to the navgraph and we actually have an action here from our customization fragment so that we can navigate the user. Um, and so this is the layout that we've built here. It basically has this big section that the user is going to be able to modify and they'll do so by sliding these sliders left and right. Uh, these sliders all say red, but eventually they're going to be the RGB, the red, green, blue values of the color that they're building here. We'll output the information here for them so they can kind of see it as they're changing it outside of see, watching this change as well. And then a little save button to go ahead and actually you know, commit their changes, I guess, to the uh, application. Nothing too fancy here. This is just a view. This is just a text view. This is just a button. However, the one thing I did want to call out here that I don't think I've covered so far on this channel is the include tag. And this is a pretty powerful tag because this allows you to kind of build small sections of a UI and reuse them within a, within a layout or other layouts, right? So if you can kind of imagine the idea of a recycler view or a view holder or an epoxy model where you can kind of reuse certain elements of the UI, you can do that as well in XML. And for something like this, it actually makes a tremendous amount of sense to do so because it's the same section of the UI just built over and over again. And it's, it would just be unnecessarily complicated to put this in a recycler view. So essentially all you need to know is that the include layout will allow you to literally in place of this tag include an entire layout file that you've defined elsewhere. So we can see here pretty standard stuff as far as being able to define an ID for this particular uh, layout that's being included. And then the layout tag that does not exist, or sorry, attribute that does not exist in any of these other elements here, right? You, you'll see the different kinds of or different things that pop up that have layout in it, but there's nothing, there's no specific 
attribute that has just layout unless you're within the include tag. And this is where you define the layout file that you're looking to include. So as you can see here, we've defined at layout, layout underscore color picker slider, which is what I've defined this layout file to be. And if you take a look at it here, we can clearly see that there is a text view and then a seek bar and we get this small UI section here. When we combine that with you know three other, or I guess two other, when we get a total of three includes, we end up with a layout that ultimately looks like this. We can still modify them, these elements however we want. We can put a margin on them, we can put padding on them, we can put a background element on them, etc. And we will also be able to get access at the fragment level to these different items that exist in here. So namely this text view and this seek bar, which we're actually right now just going to change to seek bar. Um, and then we can you know, modify them as we see fit or attach listeners or do whatever we need to do. So the include tag here, extremely powerful. Okay, Very so we have this empty fragment here that literally doesn't do anything but inflate the layout that we've told it to so far. And I've gone ahead and actually created the view model that we're going to be keeping true to to ensure our MVVM pattern. And gone ahead and just implemented one simple function here of setting our priority name, which we get passed into us via the safe arcs. So if we go ahead and take a look at our view model, we've gone ahead and defined a view state, right? And so there will be a live data that the fragment is going to observe of this view state that's going to hold the red, green, and blue value, on top of which we're going to have the priority name that is private and the way that someone is going to access it, i.e. the fragment, is through this function, which is just going to go ahead and format it appropriately so that we end up with some something that's going to look like that. Um, so otherwise we've gone ahead and defined this simple function where we're just setting uh, the priority name and then I've stubbed out a few functions here for the different changes that are going to happen for the red, green, and blue sliders which we will then go ahead and update the live data that the fragment is observing therefore the fragment will go ahead and update its view and update its state and then we'll go from there so simply gone ahead here and created our internal and external view state objects here one mutable one just the regular live data and the one that is public is just the normal live data of our particular type here and so that's basically so that the view layer, the fragment, is only going to be able to consume these events and not actually modify the data behind the scenes without, of course, invoking one of these different functions. So let's go ahead and implement these functions real quick. So this here should do it. We're going to go ahead and grab the current view state. If for some reason that's null, we'll start over with a new view state. And then we go ahead and post an updated view state object to our live data where we copy everything over except whatever value we're changing. In this function, it's red. In this function, it's green. And then in this function, it's the blue value. This will trigger the view state live data observer to fire. It will get the updated information. And then it's the fragment's job to update the UI accordingly. OK, so back here in the fragment, we can go ahead and set up some of our listeners and things that we're going to have to do to get the user input. So as I mentioned here, the red color, blue, and green color layouts are the IDs of the layouts that we've included. And you can see here that it actually is not a particular view itself. It is actually another layout color picker slider binding, which is coming from our view binding. And if you go ahead and see our layout file here, it follows the exact same pattern where it's the entire name with binding attached to it. So if we take a look at our red color layout, we can then go ahead and see that there are, or there is, a seek bar and a text view within it. And then within each one of those red, green, and blue color layouts, we will see the exact same thing. So I'm simply just going to run an apply block here so that we're basically able to operate on this entire object within here. Okay, so quite simply, we've done the same thing for all of these different layouts, but essentially we set the text of the text view to match the corresponding color. So for the red color layout, we have the text of red, green, green, and blue, blue. And then each of them also have a seek bar inside of that layout. And we go ahead and set an on seek bar change listener, which is this seek bar listener, which is a custom class that I've gone ahead and made, which just simply extends the seek bar change listener, I believe interface, yep, that it needs to. And in order to do that, you need to override these three different functions, but the only one that we really care about is the on progress changed. When the progress gets changed, we actually then go ahead and invoke the function that's passed in 
to this constructor of this object that again takes an integer and returns nothing and the way we've declared that is for our red color layout we're going to go ahead and call the view model on red change and then the green on green change and blue on blue change. So we've basically created a listener once instead of having to implement the listener three different times and go ahead and uh, basically give it a function to point to in order to basically provide its updates. I'm assuming that will work just fine and then otherwise we're going to go ahead and listen to our view state or observe our view state and then we're going to have to go ahead and modify the UI with each update. So we're going to go ahead and set our name text view, which I think I'll just go ahead and update to title text view at this point. Name sounds a little weird. Title text view text equals our view state. Nope. Get formatted title. And then I think the only other thing is to set the color. So what we can do here is we can define the a particular color from the color.rgb value. We have all this information here from our view state, so we will simply just fetch it in the correct order, and then we will have a color afterwards that we can quite simply set to the color view, which is just this big rectangle up here. I think the only thing left to do at this moment is actually get into this fragment. Okay, so now we should be good. I needed to actually use the action where we could pass in a particular priority name here instead of just referencing it by its ID because the fragment requires that. Okay, first thoughts here, a little interesting that we have this going on here and that's because the green takes up more space than the red text and therefore pushes this over a little bit. So a little something to change here, but if we go ahead and just mess with our seek bar here, we can see that we're actually in real time updating our color here. You can see things changing quite simply, and if you're good with colors, you'll understand, uh, I guess, how to make these, and you can play around with it to find out exactly what combination of things will get you to the color that you're ultimately looking for. So. This is quite a fun exercise as is. So I've gone ahead and updated the layout here a little bit. Uh, still need to clean this stuff up here, but you can clearly see that the MVVM and view state architecture here is kind of coming together. It's starting to work. You see that it's pretty reactive and pretty snappy as it should be. And go ahead and clean this up over the next few episodes to actually get the user to customize a particular priority level, allow them to save it, and then move on from there. Maybe we'll even implement allowing different customizations for light and dark mode colors. So taking a quick look at it here in dark mode, everything still looks pretty good. Not gonna lie, this looks very good. So I'm quite happy with how this stuff's coming out. Yep, there we go. Just updated the background here of the seek bars to actually go ahead and match the other seek bar that we have in another layout in the app. And so now things are looking really good. I'm very happy with how this is coming out. You can clearly see that this is working perfectly and I assume or I know running this on a real device instead of an emulator is just gonna have this be even smoother, crisper, clearer. So very good stuff so far. I think this is a really good spot to go ahead and stop the episode. I'm sorry if it's a little long. First episode back in a while, gotta get back into the rhythm of it. But uh, like I said in the beginning of the video, the info for my TikTok profile is in the description. Greatly appreciate you checking it out if you do have it. Otherwise, if you made it this far, I'd really appreciate a like on the video to let me know you enjoyed it. Otherwise, I will catch you in the next one. Thanks.